Hello everyone, uh, welcome to Aspen Plus tutorial videos. Um, yeah, I'm back. Um, first of all, I would like to apologize for not uploading a new Aspen Plus uh, videos recently. Uh, the reason is because, I, know, I as I said before, I had issues with my uh, Aspen licensings and uh, I just get it, uh, I, I was able to, to fix it and now I'm preparing one. Uh, so for this week videos, I'm going to talk about uh, the utility features as well as the uh, carbon mon carbon tracking features in Aspen Plus, uh, which I think is quite 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 important, but not 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 fully explored, I guess, by 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 students. Uh, for example, right, uh, monitoring CO two emission is very useful, especially when when you want you really want to sort of like uh, assess the uh, sustainability of your plan, and given the fact that you know uh, we have uh, because we want to combat uh, climate change and things like that, so it's it's quite important for 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 you or for for us to to. To at least uh, see how much uh, carbon dioxide emission, or 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 for example, uh, methane emission that that, that is that is uh, produced or emitted by 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 the process itself. But uh, the issue here is uh, these two separate topics are quite long. So I'm gonna uh, so I decided to divide to divide uh, it into two parts. The first part is to assign utility, which I will do today. The second part is. We're gonna see uh, the we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna explore the the carbon tracking option in Aspen Plus to 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 to, to assess the sustainability and and, and carbon dioxide uh, uh, emission uh, of our process to the atmosphere. So yeah, for this particular uh, a process, uh, the process that I will simulate today is uh, the separation of heptane uh, from toluene. Um, I, I think if I'm not mistaken, uh, uh, this is the this is not really a normal distillation. This is a, an extractive uh, distillation uh, using NMP, which I will explain later. Um, okay, moving on. Uh, yeah, before that, I'm just going to talk about utility. I I, I think uh, when when uh, I'm when people or undergraduate students uh, do plan design, what I see is they they rarely uh, take into uh think quite a lot i guess they really uh uh, uh they don't really uh, discuss much i guess or take into consideration the utility okay usage the effect of utility and things like that on their plan i, I think the reason is because uh i think in Aspen Plus, right, uh, uh, or, or when, when students do uh, plan design in general, when they finish with their basic uh, base case, I would say, uh, process flow, and then and then they give them result, the simulation converge, so they're happy. So, and so, so they don't really want to go deeper, I guess, into the utility usage. That's number one. Number two, uh, let's say they, they have completed their base case uh, uh, process of flow sheet, right? So they do. They, they continue with the uh, economic analysis, and then they got this uh, operating, uh, the, this operating cost and utility usage and things like that. Uh, so uh, when they do that, right? Uh, they don't really care. They don't really uh, take into consideration what what are the condition of the utility. They just basically use whatever default values that Aspen does give. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just that maybe for some, in, in some cases, right, the, the, the default values of Aspen Plus may not necessarily uh, 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 correct to your, to the process, to that particular process. Maybe, maybe yes, maybe no, I don't know. But, but what I'm trying to say here is, uh, they just, they just basically, the student just use whatever numbers, whatever information that Aspen Plus use Okay, when they when they uh, from the uh, from the economic evaluation result from Aspen Plus, so they don't really uh, they don't really check the numbers and things like that. That's what I'm trying to say. So yes, yeah, we know uh, utilities uh, um, uh, for utilities uh, for 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 the process, right? It's not like they they. they they took place at low temperature, at, at like ambient condition, at atmospheric pressures. 
most of the intake place at low temperatures, high temperatures, high elevated pressures, and things like that. So you need something to heat up, to cool it down, and to to to, to run the the process unit, compressors, pump, and things like that. So you sometimes you need a condens, you need to liquefy the material. Sometimes you need to vaporize the material. So you need a utility. So uh, I I I got this information. I got this definition, I guess, from this uh, you know oh, this is a well-known book, uh, G uh, Gavin Towler. So, uh, but according to them, utilities is a uh, is used for the ancillary service needed for the operation for in the operation of any production process, normally supplied from a central central site facilities or over the fence suppliers or utility companies. Um, yeah, according to them also, I found that utilities contribute to 5 to 10% of the price of the product. So you need to make sure that, you, uh, you know, you, uh, it's, it's good to have to, to minimize the utility usage. Um, yeah, there are a lot. Uh, so be, before we setting up, before we assign a, a, a utility, right, normally it, it is better for, for us to complete the mass and energy balance as well as pinch analysis to determine the accuracy, the, the, to determine the ac accurate utility usage. Uh, here I'm just giving you a few examples of utility that's commonly used. Eh? Yeah, you know, we have steam. Uh, normally when I ask my students, uh, okay, well, what is the utility that you use? They, they use uh, when they for this particular to, to heat up a certain uh, certain uh, fluid, right? They say or oh, steam, but but uh, but uh, most of them don't really know that. You know, we have a different type of steam, like high pressure steam, medium pressure steam, and low pressure steam. So steam is good, is that the the, the, the latent heat is quite high. Uh, it's non toxic. Uh, it allows a, pre a precise temperature control, meaning that we just need to play around with the, with the pressure and then uh, we'll, if we talk about uh, saturated steam, right, we play around with the pressure, we'll get the, the specific uh, temperature that we want. And then if, if we have a leakage, right, we will see that the steam coming out. So it's, it's, it is visible. So that, there's a few advantage of steam. And then we have electricity to run the compressor, pumps and things like that. Not going to go into details here. Uh, electricity uh, they, they can be generated on site, or you can just get it some from the off the fence or over the fence uh, supplier. Uh, other than that, we also have cooling waters, normally using the T range between uh, 120 and 40 degrees Celsius. If lower temperatures required, lower than 40 degrees Celsius, you can use a uh, cooling water first to cool it down, and then use a uh, chill water. Or refrigeration system uh, to cool it down to a target temperatures, and then fire heater is basically a furnace, basically a fire you know, hot air, I guess. Uh, so uh, it, it is a, a, a something to consider if your high pressure steam. Uh, you no, know, it's something to consider if you are if you need a temperature above the high pressure steam temperatures, which is around two hundred and fifty degrees Celsius. Uh, this is just an example of the furnace. Basically, uh, a furnace is basically one of the uh, box furnace, I guess. Uh, it's one of the example of fire heater. Uh, this is uh, this is the furnace or, or, or tubular reactor of, for naphtha cracking, running around 950, around 900 degrees Celsius. So as you see here, number one, this is the, the tubes where the, the, the feedstock, which is naphtha, going into. Uh, so being heated up inside this tube, and then you see number two here. This is the furnace gun, basically where the the the, the we we uh, uh, where the the, the fuel is being vapor, uh, being 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 uh, burned, I guess, to, to create fires and generate heat. And then you get number three here is a peep hole. Uh, just for people to see, I guess, but I, I, I just cannot imagine people seeing something hot inside, but never mind it. But that, that, this is under fire heater, okay? There, there are different types of uh, unit uh, uh, unit for, for fire heater. You can have, a, you know, uh, uh, yeah, one example is box furnace. Uh, the rest, uh, I guess you can just Google it, I guess. And then you also have a hot oil or a heat transfer fluid. Uh, example, Dalton A, uh, Obviously, it was the it was it was produced by uh, Dow Chemicals. Uh, this is good for when uh, fire heat or steam are not suitable. Uh, for example, my company that I worked last time, uh, we, we we dealt with uh, bitumen, so it need to be uh, we 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 use a uh, hot uh, we use a uh, hot oil uh, as as a, a heat transfer element. 
to make sure that the bitumen bitumen is always above its uh, pore points so that is it is easier for 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 it to be pumped and then transported um yeah the, uh, the range is between 50 to 400 the, the upper temperature limit normally uh, set by the thermal decomposition of the oil itself uh yeah this is another example of of the recommended temperature range for uh, these types of heating medium i i took it from this uh this textbook uh, i guess you can go ahead and look at it i'm not going to go into details so yeah uh coming to our aspen plus problem as i said uh we will try to okay first we will try to simulate this process which is the process of separating one to one okay by by mold uh heptane and toluene mixtures uh the the, the fit uh specification is all in here uh this is what 104.5 is uh i'm not going to use this number by the way but but it just this implies the 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 temperature the 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 bubble the is it bubble point or dew point no no the bubble point temperatures basically they are still in liquid Phase, but it is above point temperatures. That's what I'm trying to say. So they are separated via extractive uh, distillation at atmospheric pressure using NMP as a solvent. Uh, the feed stage uh, enters at the middle of the column. You can go ahead and then and, 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 uh, all of the specification are in here. So just need to input the numbers and then we'll see what happened. Uh, what else? We, yeah, we have a two column, two distillation column. We have NMP, we have feed. And then the first column we're gonna get uh, heptane, and then W one here I would consider as a waste, I guess, but not really waste because you still have a toluene. Uh, and then it goes to a second a second distillation column where toluene will be separated from the NMP. Uh, it, it enters at stage twelve, fit stage eight, uh, NMP stage five, reflux ratio three, reflux ratio two point five, four eight, and we're going to use a total condenser and a cathode reboiler and a TR property method. Uh, distillate rate is equal to heptane or toluene flow rate, meaning that the distillate rate for this one is 65.51 because we want to get as much heptane or toluene as possible. Same goes with the second one, which is 65.51. So before I assign the utility, I need to make sure that the, I was able to simulate this process successfully and then compare the result with the uh, textbook. Uh, by the way, I took this uh, this, 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 uh, this example problem from this uh, textbook. Uh, you can go ahead and check. So yeah, let's go to our Aspen Plus and then see whether we can simulate this process or not. So yeah, this is my Aspen Plus. I get it open before. So I'm gonna input the component. The first one is heptane. It's like heptane, uh, toluene, and then NMP. And then I hit next as usual. Nothing new here. Just use NRTL property methods. Moving on. This the this just the, the, the binary interaction parameters. I don't want to deal, I don't want to deal with this. So I'm just gonna accept whatever numbers they give. Um see wait a while. Okay, go to the simulation environment. Um I'm going to close this one. I don't like it. I want. I want. I normally want my 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 uh, my uh, flow sheet, main flow sheet, to be as big as possible. So you, I, I normally will uh, minimize this ribbon. But it's up to it's up to the users, whichever they find they find to be more uh, comfortable. Uh, the, the the environment they they are com uh, comfortable with. Uh, yeah, columns. Go to columns. Red flag number one. Effect number two. Uh, I have two feet, not two stream, not two feet. Uh, I will choose this one. Uh, yes, I will choose this one. Go to here. I choose this one. Go to here. This one go to here. Uh, so let's close this guy. Need it anymore? So I'm going to rename this block. Uh, I say yeah, in the example problem, it was mentioned DC1. It says DC2. Uh, this is feed. 
uh, this is NNT. Uh, this is what uh, head team. Uh, this is W one. Uh, this is what is this? A uh, uh, This is W two. Basically, NMP the 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 remain uh, the, the 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 solvent. Uh, let's see. Let's align a bit just to make it nice. I guess. Okay, I'm gonna input the feed stream. Uh, feed stream, just double click. Uh, pressure is 1.1 bar. Heptin is 65.51. Okay, temperature. I'm not gonna use 104.5. Uh, I just want to be. I just want to be uh, more specific, more, more accurate. I guess. Uh, so I'm gonna use a vapor fraction of zero, meaning that they are in meaning that the, the fit is it is in their bubble uh, point temperatures I, but i think uh, when you specify this the temperature would be around 1.4 104.5 i think it's more or less the same okay i'm done uh, moving on to nmp nmp is around 630 i think uh pressure is let's see Oh, I forgot what's the pressure. Maybe 1.1 bar, I think. Our temperature is 100 degrees Celsius. Okay, done. Uh, I'm just going to hit next. Or you can go to flow sheet and then double click uh, stages. The first one here, DC1 is 12. Condenser is total. Reboiler, scatter reboiler. Reflect ratio is 3. Distillate rate uh, is equal to the molar flow rate of your uh, toluene or uh, heptane. So 65. Point five one. Uh, stream. Uh, let's see. Okay, feed stream enters at stage number A. Uh, NMP stage number uh, five. Uh, pressure is one eighty m. Okay, moving. Move, uh, moving on. Uh, column number two, number of stages is eight uh, condenser total. Uh, the same thing. Refract ratio is 2.5. Uh, this enters at stage number four. Uh, pressure uh, 1 ATM. Okay, I think I'm done. But let me check one last time in case something weird. Uh, uh, in case I, I input something incorrect. But yeah, looks good. Uh, here. Next, uh, and then click run. Should okay, good. Yes, a distillation column, nothing. It is a known process, so normally it's not gonna give you any trouble if you input the information correctly. Um, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna evaluate the uh, mass flow in here, but I already got all of the information and I already type uh, I already uh, tabulate uh, the result in the table uh, side by side with the uh, with the uh, with the textbook uh, result. So let's go back to our uh slides to analyze our uh pro our our uh mass and energy balance yes but if you want to see you can just click and then see you know as i said 104.5 is the bubble point at temperature so you can either put 104.5 but i just want to be more accurate that's why i put our vapor fraction is equal to a zero meaning that it is there in liquid phase uh, this is the, the 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 result that I get uh, when compared with the uh, with the textbook uh, result uh, highlighted in yellow. So as you see, not much. I mean, we are exactly the same. Nothing, 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 nothing out of the ordinary, I guess, because you know they. Are, I'm dealing with the same same process, same uh, same condition, and things like that. So I don't expect things to be. Uh, 
to be to be very different. But uh, so yeah, uh, we have successfully completed the process flow. But the second thing that we uh, I want to I want to do next would be to assign the utility. As I said, uh, if you if you go straight away to the economic analysis, right, and Aspen will use the utility the default utility usage that they think is the most suitable for your process. But but. Uh, but you have to understand. Well, you can you can go for that option if you want. But if you want to be, if you want to really analyze, like or assign, okay, a specific utility uh, for your process, or if you want to be more accurate, I guess, uh, with with your condition of your utilities, maybe your plant has a different utility uh, temperatures and pressures, so you need to assign yours. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, but in here, if you see uh, the temp. Uh, heptane temperature is 98, uh, 203 for the uh, for for the bottom product, 203 for the bottom product. Total wind is uh, 111 uh, degrees Celsius. So uh, if you go back to the textbook or if you go back to the slide that I show, okay, I, I'm gonna um, uh, if you see that the, the cooling water can be used between 140, I guess. I I don't really remember, but this is a good, this is a good, I think this is a good uh, temperatures to be, to use a uh, cooling water, same goes with this one. For this one, I cannot use a low temperature, low, 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 low pressure steam, not, also not for medium pressure steam, so I can use a high pressure steam here. So I'm going to use a high pressure steam uh, in Aspen. So that's the utility that I'm going to assign for this particular, uh, these two unit operation. So I'm going to go back to my Aspen to assign my uh, utility. Going back to the Aspen Plus, as I said before, if you go, if you activate your economic analysis, they will give you the, the utility usage. But I want to be specific, okay? I, I, I want it to be, uh, I, I want to check the, the in and out of my utility correctly so that, that because some, sometimes maybe, you, as I said, your plan may, may run slightly differently, okay? The utility uh, may, may be used differently in terms of condition going in and out, so that may affect the, uh, you know, the 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 amount of utility that uh, you are using, and consequently affecting the uh, operating cost. So here, what I will do, I will go to the utilities. Okay, so I will hit new. Uh, here, I will type maybe steam, I guess, maybe HPS for high pressure steam because I'm going to use a high pressure steam. So here, you have a lot of options. Okay, uh, uh, for this particular uh, demo, I will use uh, uh, the wh whatever uh, uh, whatever uh, available uh, uh, whatever available utilities in the library of Aspen, uh, because I, I'm kind of lazy to do one. So I'm going, I'm going to use a high pressure steam, but I will edit them out uh, to, fit, to fit my, 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 uh, my requirement, I guess. So here, if you put your cursor here, you will see that the high pressure steam enters at 250, outlet is 249, at pressure 572 PSIA. I don't know, 572 divided by 14.7, I don't know, maybe around 40, 30. I don't know, that's the, the pressure that, uh, of the high pressure steam. Maybe for your plan, it, it, it has a different pressure. So I hit OK. Okay, if you remember in the component specification, I don't, I don't, I don't input water uh, in my component. But since my utility is water, it requires as it requires me to add water into the component. That's what it means here. So I, 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 I put yes. Uh, they will update the, the parameters. Nothing, nothing, uh, not, nothing weird, I guess. Okay, so as you can see here, this is the high pressure steam uh, uh, for cost. You can change it depending on the on the cost. Maybe your company has their own cost per per, per unit per per. Uh... Sorry about that. Um... So yeah, maybe maybe your company has uh, their own uh, set price, which which you can edit by the way. Uh, per kilojoule of supplied uh, heat. So here uh, I go to inlet and outlet. As you can see here, it enters 250 degrees Celsius, the vapor fraction of one, so it's saturated steam. And then it leaves at 249, 
uh, vapor fraction zero, meaning that it leaves uh, 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 as a as a uh, as as a subcooliquid, I guess, because it's one degree Celsius below uh, two hundred and fifty. Because uh, vaporization occurs at uh, at, at the same temperature, right? So I'm assuming 250 is the vaporization that, uh, uh, is where the, the, the phase change occurs. So 249 is going to be subcool liquid, I guess. I don't know. But this is any matter. Maybe in this case, right? Uh, in this case, what happened is the heat uh, being used is just heat. Uh, uh, the, the heat being used, okay, uh, 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 for, for the utility or supplied by utility is the heat of vaporization. Okay, the latent heat itself. Maybe for maybe in maybe uh, in this case, I probably would like to maybe two uh, forty degrees Celsius. So the 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 so here what happened here is the the heat supplied is not only heat of latent heat of vaporization or uh, latent heat, but also the sensible heat because two fifty to two forty involves sensible heat. So I I will have more more uh more what is it? more heat i guess being supplied so consequently uh, 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 i will have a i will have a lesser use of uh, steam now this really depends by the way you can use the default numbers but uh, i just feel that 250 to 249 is kind of a big of a stretch because i i, I read somewhere that the uh, by by galvin Towler, they mentioned that the, the temperature is normally between 5 to 30 degrees celsius different so so that's maybe Maybe there's something that we, you, you, you can think about. Okay, done with the uh, steam. Uh, the next one, uh, I go back here, I click new. The second one is a cooling water. So if you go down, there's gonna be a cooling water here. I hit okay. Now the same thing, okay, the same thing, but inlet and outlet here, uh, it enters 20 degrees Celsius, okay. Uh, pressure 180 m something that you can change and it leaves at 25 degrees celsius 180 m. okay this is like five degrees celsius uh you know difference i guess between in and out maybe i don't know uh, as i said uh in the textbook I, I i read it could be anywhere between 5 to 30 degrees celsius so maybe i'm aiming uh, i'm gonna aim a bit higher i guess maybe around 35 or 30 i guess maybe just to be safe okay now that you are done uh, setting up your, your utilities, now you can assign those particular utilities to your uh, unit operation. So I go, I double click, I double click this. And then if you go to your condenser, should be a utility option here. So you assign the cooling water. And then for your reboiler, you can assign your uh, high pressure uh, utility. You can do the same for this one. Uh, condenser, cooling water, reboiler uh, is high pressure steam. Okay, now that you are done, just hit next. Uh, oops, yeah. Uh, did they will go back to the property method because I, I have went like because uh, if you remember, I said it, it required me to add water as a, as the water as a as a component. So that's why they are updating the parameter. So yeah, go to the simulation environment. Now you can run your simulation. Should be no problem, I think. Yeah, okay, good. Now, if you want, if you want to see how much utility that you are using, uh, just go back to the utilities. Uh, let's say you want to check the cooling water, you can go to result. So this is the utility assigned to the uh, column one, column two. You will see that this is the, the duty being uh, uh, being uh, supplied to the column, usage, and then cost. Uh, I'm not going to explain it here because I already input all of the information in the table. So let's go back to our set to observe the uh, to 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 observe this, uh, to to analyze the result. So as you can see here, I have uh, I have uh, compiled or collected all of the results and assigned it to this uh, condenser and reboiler for each unit operation. So as you can see here, uh, cooling water I need around two, two around two hundred ton per hour. Uh, 
this one around uh, two ton per hours, uh, two hundred ton per hours, and then uh, and then around six ton per hour. So this is their associated cost, and that's pretty much it. Um, you, as I said, you can use the the if you as I said if you select the the uh, if you activate the economic analysis, they will assign it for you. No, no issues. But in this case, I just want to be, I just want to assign my own condition so that I probably will get a more accurate uh, usage. Because, uh, because as I said, if you use, for example, a one uh, 250 degrees Celsius to 249, only rely on, only, only rely on the on the latent heat, maybe maybe you would use more uh, more steam, for example, as opposed uh, as opposed of having uh, two fifty degrees Celsius to maybe two forty. Where in that case, you will be using latent heat plus sensible heat, and consequent for that, uh, and, and as a consequence, you would use a less uh, less less uh, steam. But but this is really depend on. On, on the process itself uh, and really depends on on you know on, on the, the the plan requirement i guess so yeah uh, that would be all for me uh, thank you all for listening i hope you like the videos uh, if you like the videos give the thumbs up uh, as i said i, I will in, I, I will put the second part of the of the of the demo which is on the which is on the monitoring of CO2 emissions uh, later. So yeah, uh, please subscribe to my channels and I'll see you again in the next video. Bye-bye. Uh,